Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. It seems, Mr. Jefferson, that you can't control the actions of your men. You're relieved of your command and suspended until further notice. Now get out. I know you'd like to hear more of this story and just how I got myself suspended. We all have a book of rules we live by. Sometimes the book is real. And sometimes the book is a code of ethics and actions that we've set up in our own minds. In our story today, we run into a man who lives by a real book. I like to call this story, The Hardhead. Well, fellas, the old man's finally consented to have that operation and a few other things taken care of, so he'll be as good as new. Well, who finally convinced Colonel Anders that he shouldn't wait any longer? I don't know. Maybe his boss did. Ah, Mrs. Anders can make plenty strong arguments. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she can when she has to. Ah, she's a nice lady, though. Yeah, sure she is. Ain't she put up with that ornery old walrus all these years? Oh, you better not let Colonel hear you call him that. I have, and he knows it. Ain't no sense trying to put the doctor off. I hope he makes out real well. Uh, who's going to replace him? You? No, a man's coming from Washington to fill in while the colonel's recovering. His name's uh, George Benton. He ain't no relative of the big shot ranger in Washington, is he? Could be, old-timer. Could be. <laughs> this ought to be rich. Ah, oh, maybe wait and see and then make judgment, old man. Yeah, Let's give him an even break. Oh, I hope he does the same for us. Uh, when's he due, Sonny? He's due to arrive in Central City in the morning. We'll probably hear from him shortly thereafter. What's the message, pal? We're going to have a visitor. Here, read it for yourself. Well, spill it out, young feller. Yeah, who, VIP? Listen to this. Arriving this afternoon at your office to inspect your command. Make arrangements at hotel for one week. Signed, George Benton, area commander. I got a feeling in my bones that this fella's gonna be some real hot shot. Yes, sir, you mark my words if he ain't. That message about as friendly as a rattlesnake with a toothache. off the second car. Oh, looks like old spit and polish himself. I don't think he's ever sat down in that uniform. Them creases ain't got a wrinkle in them. Take it easy, old timer. Watch what you say. Here he comes. I presume you're Bill Jefferson? That's right, Mr. Benton. Uh, these gentlemen are Rangers Grey Wolf and uh, Stumpy Jenkins, and this young fellow is Henry Scott. How do you do, uh, Mr. Benton? You. Take my bags to the car, boy. Look sharply now. Mr. Jenkins, aren't you getting to be too old to be in the Forest Service? Uh, don't let external appearances deceive you, Mr. Benton. My weathered skin is the result of a lifetime out of doors. And it's a sure thing that skin appearance has nothing to do with muscle tone and personal stamina. I'm five years under the retirement age. I see. I'll know soon whether you're telling the truth or not upon examination of your birth certificate. Are you calling me a liar, sir? That remains to be seen. 
It's not uncommon for an old and trusted employee who's been the boss's pet to receive special consideration. No, you oh, you see here! Forget it, Stumpy. Well, I must say you men don't show much appearance. What does that mean, Mr. Benton? Your uniforms aren't freshly pressed. They were this morning, and we were cleanly shaven then, too. Mm, you don't say. Well, take me to the hotel so I can freshen up. I don't see what's so funny. That guy should be the chief nut in a fruitcake factory. You said it, young feller. What you see funny in this, Bill? <laughs> I can still see the look of astonishment on Benton's face when the old-timer let him have that double-barreled blast about the condition of his skin and so oh. forth. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you ever find all those fancy words to put together in one place? <laughs> I guess that's the first time you fellers ever heard me use standing up King's English, huh? Well, I can use it all right when I have to. <laughs> you sure can. I think new big boss gets shock of life. <laughs> well, that ain't the only one he's going to get if he doesn't calm down. Oh, I'll say... Take these bags to the car, boy. Wow! <laughs> Apparently he doesn't know that calling a man a liar out here is fighting words. Not too many years ago, he would have been gunned down for that. I think this man plenty great troublemaker. That may well be, Grey Wolf, but let's save him to me, huh? You fellas bide your time and bite your tongues. Let me do the talking. Out here, he's only one rank above me. Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. This is George Benton. I'm ready to have a car pick me up at the hotel. Yes, sir. I'll send the car right away. It shouldn't take longer than five minutes. Uh, plenty heap big chief want to be picked up in big black car. Yep. With a livery chauffeur, no <laughs> doubt. Uh... You mean a livery chauffeur, Stumpy? <laughs> That's what I said, a livery chauffeur. <laughs> oh. Okay, forget it. Say, boy, uh, go over and pick up the big boss, will you? I'll give you boy right in the head. <laughs> go out and get going, Henry, before Benton gets his dander up. Sure thing. On the double. Oh, uh, Henry. Uh, yes, sir? Uh, remember what I said about keeping your mouth shut. If anyone's to stick his neck out with Ben, it'll be me. I'll remember, even if I have to bite my tongue to do it. <laughs> Don't say it. I know what's on the tip of your tongue. You're going to tell us that goes for the rest of us, too. Seems to me that Colonel Anders is getting a little crotchety to let this area get in such terrible shape. Uh, could be because he isn't well. Uh, it doesn't really matter since I'm going to take over for at least six months. By that time, this area and the districts in it will be up to standard. I wasn't aware that this district isn't in top condition. That's fairly obvious, Mr. Jefferson. All too obvious. Where's your manual of regulations? In the bottom drawer of my desk, with about six inches of dust on it. Mr. Jefferson. Why don't you call me Bill? I don't it's believe easy. in familiarity between ranks, Mr. Jefferson. Now I want to see that manual on top of your desk, and I want you to use it. From now on, we're going to do things strictly by the book. In that case, you're going to have trouble. I'm going to have trouble? And just what does that infer? Mr. Benton, do you know why I've kept the manual in the bottom drawer? Certainly, because you're too lazy to read it. I keep it there for the same reason a judge keeps law books in his chambers. For reference. But it's my job as boss ranger to interpret the regulations in the light of the circumstances surrounding a given situation just as a judge interprets the law. 
Now, not too infrequently, a judge finds that the letter of the law is a little too harsh or inflexible. That's why I don't run my district by the book, Mr. Ben. I'm not interested in your sentimental poppycock. We'll use the book and use it right to the letter and to the periods and the rest of the punctuation marks. That's an order, Mr. Jefferson. Yes, sir. Are you ready to leave on an inspection tour? I most certainly am. Uh, just a minute. I'll get the book out. Why this sudden interest in the manual? There's a regulation I wish to point out to my superior. Uh, under the chapter on supervision, page 212, paragraph 3, line 10... Under no circumstances shall a supervising ranger reprimand any subordinate in the presence of other subordinates or superiors. All reprimanding to be done privately, and uh, so on and so forth. You'll find, Mr. Jefferson, that sometimes it is necessary to amend the regulations as the situation requires. Not to depart from the book, but to add to it so that it's more explicit. And I see fit to adjust that regulation at this time. Let's get on with the inspection tour. times when I wish I didn't have any self-control. I should have walked up to Benton and bellied him one right in the mouth, his big fat mouth. Yeah, I feel the same way. Well, what good it do us? And then we stoop as low as he. Yeah, you're right, Gray Wolf, but there are times when a beast like that can try a man's patience. Bill's a hundred times the man he is. Yeah, you said it. Boy, I suppose he'll ride Bill's back with with sharp spurs on all during the inspection. Yep, I sure will. That feller is just getting warmed up. Wait till his cylinder heads get hot and feel full power. He'll be fortunate if somebody's fist doesn't remove all of his teeth in one swoop. Ah, uh, we better get to work now. Yeah, we ain't getting paid to sit around and get mad, I guess. There's a pretty shabby-looking fire tower. Needs a coat of paint. There isn't a rust spot on it. It'll get painted next year unless rust spots develop. The manual specifically states that all equipment is to be painted yearly. Paint is expensive. Why waste it? What kind of a junk wagon do you call this truck? You've got more tools and equipment on it than is necessary. Those extra tools and equipment are most necessary for the ground crews to get their work done quickly and efficiently. Nonsense. The manual sets up the list of rules necessary for work. See that the excess is taken care of. Yes, sir. Just how often do you have drills for the civilian firefighters? Every three months. That's a violation of strict regulations. You'll have them monthly from now on. I can see it for green crews, but the men in Naughty Pine have fought many fires. They've got a lot of experience. They, they have to take time off from business to attend the drill. I think that's asking too much of seasoned men. They lose enough business time fighting real fires. Read the manual, Mr. Jefferson. Read the manual. In the morning, Mr. Jefferson, I'll give you a copy of my written report of the most unsatisfactory inspection I've ever conducted. I'll be most anxious to read it. Not after you see it, you won't. And I warn you that I have considerable power in Washington... So any changes I suggest to Washington will be approved by the top brass. Your uncle is on the executive committee, isn't he? Mm. Why, yes, that's correct. Good night, Mr. Benton. I don't see what you fellows are raving about. If this Benton is so hard-headed bent on the book that he eats it, sleeps it, and breathes it, that's Jake with me. Hey, aren't you uh, sabotaging the works here, Tom? Yeah. Oh, I heard you say more than once that, well, you never work for anyone like you work for Bill. That's right, Henry, my boy. Exactly right. Uh, what are you up to, young feller? I think Tom had a trick up his sleeve. Oh, not at all. If Benton wants to run this outfit by the manual, then I can work by the manual. Don't you guys catch on? Yep. I'm beginning to. 
I reckon I was so busy getting mad that I got a little stupid and didn't think of that myself. You mean we work by a letter of manual and nothing more? That's right. I'll work extra, but it'll cost Mr. Benton money. Time and a half to be specific. Also, I've suddenly become a little slow on the uptake when it comes to using initiative and brain cells. I don't get paid to think. That's Mr. Benton's job. He's the boss. We might get Bill into more hot water. And how? All we do is follow manual. Yep. And that should make Mr. Benton the most happy fella. Maybe by the time six months are up, that hardhead will have learned a thing or two. Easy. Easy, Bess. Well, all I've got to do is saddle up. I'm ready to go to work. Good morning, Mr. Scott, uh, Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Grey Wolf. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Mr. Jefferson. Jefferson. All right, out with it. What are you fellas up to? Us? Yes, you. All three of you for the present. Something's cooking in your noggins, and I want to know what it is. Well, how could you think we do that? Yeah, you know we ain't paid to think. <laughs> That's right. Ours is but to do or get fired. Well, what make you think we up to something, Bill? Because you fellas have changed from anger to sweetness. And that ain't natural. Sure it is. We're just a bunch of sweet kids. <laughs> Perhaps, but not overnight. Yesterday, you were so angry you could bite railroad spikes in two with one snap. And today, you're all peaches and cream. Come on, give out with it. Do you know what he's talking about, fellas? Nope. Ain't got the weirdest notion. You must think about three other rangers. I'll give you three other rangers. What do I have to do, get tough? Mr. Jefferson! Uh-oh. Hey, Daniel, you better go feed the lion before he bites instead of roars. All right. I know you're cooking something up. And I hope it doesn't get you into trouble. Stay out of Benton's way. You'll be all right. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I, I, sir. Uh, thank you for those kind words, Mr. Jefferson. Oh, you fellas are incorrigible. <laughs> I only hope your loyalty to me doesn't get you fired. You have a complaint, Mr. Perry? Uh, yes, Mr. Benton, I do. And the name's Tom. You showed it me on my last paycheck. I worked 45 minutes overtime last week, and that gives me time and a half. Is that so? Well, you've worked more than that before and never asked for overtime. Well, Bill made it up to me in lots of ways. But now we're going by the manual, and I want my overtime pay, according to the manual. Here's my birth certificate, Mr. Benton. Well, you were telling the truth, after all. And what else would you think a Christian tells? Oh, yes. Here comes the religious factor into the picture. I heard about that. Is that so? Well, there's something else you're going to hear about, too. Oh? Yep. I'm requesting light duty because of my old age. You you can't just do that on the spur of the moment. You'll leave me shorthanded. Read that fancy book of yours, Mr. Benton. I have the option to request light duty for the last five years of my career. And that's what I'm doing. We're doing everything the way you want it, sir. By the book. Mr. Jefferson, it seems that you can't control your men. Oh? Yes, they've almost committed mutiny. I seriously doubt that, Mr. Benton. If you doubt it, listen to this. Pekarsky wants to move in from the outpost weather station at once. Says his wife is now objecting to staying there unusually long. He's within his rights, according to regulations. Uh, Fitch demands he be given some new equipment to carry on his work at the Buffalo Range. That's a legitimate request. According to the book. I could name a dozen more requests and demands that have come in during the last few days. Why? You'll have to ask the men that, Mr. Benton. I can tell you why. It's a result of a fierce loyalty to you. And these men are making me eat the manual page by page. Isn't that what you want? Absolutely. I don't think so. You want to use the manual to whip my men into shape, as you call it. But the snake has turned and is now biting its master. They are using the manual, and you can't touch them, much to your displeasure. No, it won't be to my displeasure, Mr. Jefferson, but to yours. 
As of now, you're suspended from your job as chief ranger of this district and also as an ordinary forest ranger. I find your very presence here detrimental to discipline, and I have the authority to remove you. That's strictly regulation. Of course it is. I'm surprised you didn't do it sooner. You are, eh? Well, pick up your personal belongings and get out. Let's turn it off, boys, and give Bill a chance to speak. Yeah, thank you, boys. Go ahead, Sonny, speak your piece. Thanks, old-timer. Fellas, I passed the word for you to meet at my house because uh, before you went to Benton, uh, I don't want you to say anything rash. I'll rash that, hardhead. You'll have a mouthful of floating molars. Ah, Now, cool off and listen to me. I appreciate your loyalty, and it warms my heart to know that you think so fondly of me, but this kind of action isn't going to cure or solve anything. You use that violence at times. How about when you sent us into Lumbertown? Armed to the teeth and riding battle-trained horses, huh? How about that? Yeah, right. A uh, small correction, Larry. Uh, what happened when the battling lumberjacks saw us ride into town? Why, uh, well, they stopped fighting. Why? Well, well... Because they knew you meant business. That's right. Our reputation did our fighting for us. We didn't have to use the lead-weighted clubs and the sawed-off shotguns. And that's the whole point I'm trying to make. You fellas believe that you're helping me, and instead you're hurting yourselves and our reputation. A reputation that's taken years to build up in this part of the country. Folks around here respect every one of you men because you stand for a fine organization that will spare no end to protect life and property and keep the peace. Now, you think this over and you'll find that I'm right. All this thinking won't get you reinstated as our boss. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, right. Right. that's true. Now, you fellas know that I'm a Christian and I stand for the Christian way of doing things. The Lord will work things out for all of us if we keep our meddling hands off. I think I've proved that time and time again. Just be patient. You know, sometimes it's much wiser to stop fighting and let the opposition make its move. In the meantime, we'll rest up and gather new strength for the battle. The final battle. Then you're not giving up just because you're suspended. Of course I'm not giving up. Sooner or later, Benton will make a mistake. Huh, not him. He always goes by that, that manual. You're right, Tom. And that makes him right to a degree. Not human, but right. But someday he's going to get himself into a situation where he can't use the manual, and he's going to have to think for himself. That's the day he shows what he's made of. Yeah, but we might all be old men by that time. I don't think so, pal. The manual of regulations doesn't cover everything that happens. The manual isn't perfect, and neither is Benton. Someday soon, those human imperfections will be the cause of Mr. Benton's undoing. Uh, I guess you're right, Bill, now that I've cooled down enough to think about it. But suppose he doesn't make a mistake for the six months he's here. By that time, he'll have the big wigs in Washington thinking he's King Tut's (laughs) brother-in-law. Yeah, Solomon's nephew. Then you won't have a ghost of a chance of getting back in as our boss. Yeah, what about that? You fellas worry so much about tomorrow that you miss the beauty of today. Now go on home and behave yourselves like rangers. Hello, Fire Tower. Smoke and flames in Cougar Canyon County. Area 73 on the map. Very well. I'll dispatch firefighters at once. Your orders, sir? Send all ranger fighting units into the fire and sound the civilian special alarm. Yes, but... Yes, sir, on the double. Mr. Benton, there's 45 men trapped in Canyon 12 because of that wind shift. That's unfortunate. They'll have to make out as best they can, Mr. Parrish. What? Aren't you going to rescue them as quickly as possible? Mr. Parrish... Our job is to fight this fire and not play nursemaid to trap firefighters. They can dig in until the fire passes over them. Those are civilian fighters, sir. I don't care if they're on foot or on horseback, Mr. Parrish. Regulations specifically state that we are to fight the fire, bring it under control, and put it out as quickly as possible. 
We can't do two things at once and do them well. Mr. Ben, you're insane. You're under arrest, Mr. Parrish. But get back on the line and fight that fire. I'll deal further with your conduct toward a superior after the fire is off. That guy's wacky. He won't even try and help those trap men. Are you sure about that, Tom? I sure am. He told me so in no uncertain words. I'm going to go in after those men myself. Just keep your suspenders cinched up there, Sonny. I'm going to talk to that hard-headed Jasper myself. Talk? What about those men? We'll get them out. Don't fret about that. Come on, boys. Let's have a powwow with Mr. Benton. All right, let's go. Now use your head, boss. If we burn up all the firefighters, how can we protect the trees of the next fire? You have your orders, Mr. Jenkins. That's your final word? It is. Come on, boys. Let's go get those men out of that trap. This Jasper's plumb out of his eye. He's going for his gun. You draw on me, Mr. Benton. You'll be in trouble. I used to be grease lightning on the draw, and I ain't slowed down very much yet. You're under arrest, Mr. Jenkins. That may very well be, Sonny, but I'm going in after those men. You'll get back in the line and fight the fire or go to jail. Not on your life. Those men aren't going to die if I can have it. He's going to draw. Hold it, Mr. Benton. Well... I'll take that shooting iron, Mr. Benton. You do no such thing. You have no authority here. I don't think you're in any position to argue. I've got the 45 men right here behind me with blood in their eye. Your blood. Hey, Paul! He's got all the trapped men out. The word's all up and down the line that you refused them rescue. Nonsense. I'm perfectly within regulation. You'd better close up or I won't be responsible. Those men are ready to take the manual and cram it down your throat page by page. All right, men, let's get our backs into this fight and put this fire out. Mr. Benton, your train leaves in a few minutes. I suggest you get on it pronto. The feelings in this town are running pretty high against you. Very well. Is that all you have to say? Yes, that's all. Oh. Just one thing. Yes? Did you put my copy of the manual in my bags? I did, along with all your reports. That's fine. I should hate to lose it. Board! Board! Scalp me clean and call me baldy. He didn't change his hard head one bit, did he? No, he didn't, old timer. You know, there are some hard heads that never soften up. There's a man we should pray for. He doesn't seem to have an ounce of humane emotion in him. He's strictly by the book. And that was the last we ever saw or heard of Mr. Benton. When I returned to my office, I found a letter on my desk signed by him, rescinding my suspension as a ranger and chief ranger, and life returned to normal once again. Well, see you next week for more adventure with 